these are my herbs and spices as you can see they're a bit all over the place I don't use that many anymore either I tend to use a lot of fresh herbs now and to be honest I don't cook as much as I used to either so with all that in mind I decided to condense the number of spices down and I was originally going to build a spice rack but uh, I've decided the spice rack's annoying because you've got to take your spice out of here take it into the kitchen this is the pantry by the way take it into the kitchen uh, and then bring it back when you've finished each one individually so instead I'm going to build a spice caddy just to fit these sorts of spices the ones in these jars I will in fact end up either putting in small jars like this or just not stocking anymore after a period of time once they're empty Hi, welcome to my workshop. My name's Darren. These are the two different sizes of spice jar that will fit in here. These are the larger of the two and I want to fit 10 per side so I'll make it to fit these. And this is the wood we'll be using. Uh, might not use that piece, we'll see. But certainly I should imagine I'll use all of those pieces. Sides handle what I've done is I've planed or thicknessed depending on which country you're from but either way I've run them through the thickness planer uh, all of these are now 10 mil thick so what I'll be doing next is ripping them to the appropriate heights so you can see we've got labels on all of our jars and we don't want to cut off the wording we want to be able to read it which leaves us with 50 mil from base to the bottom of the lettering uh, will cover us on the different brands of jars as well so we're going to have a 50 mil base we'll lose some of that anyway when we put the bottom in so we'll have less than 50 mil we're going to rip two of them down to 50 we're going to leave one at this height because we're going to need a handle above the level of the jars so we're going to have our handle here so this is the cutting list for the spice caddy uh, the sides front and center handle are all 10 millimeter thick jarra in my case of course you can use whatever timber you fancy you'll need two of the sides uh, a front and a back so two of those pieces and one piece for the center divider handle for the base i have used three millimeter plywood you can use whatever you want Again, you'll just have to cut the right trench in the base to accommodate that. Uh, you'll only need one of those. I'm going to sandwich the pieces I want to sand in between the pieces of scrap and that will support the sand as I run off the edge so I don't round over the edges but also give me some space so I don't hit my clamps with the sander. So I've sanded all the sides to 220 grit. I've done that now mostly because it's a lot easier to do while they're separate parts. When the box is assembled, of course, I won't be able to sand the inside quite so easily. So here we go, these are sanded to 220. Now I'm going to join the sides together with box joints. I've already made a video on box joints, I'll link to that up the top corner here. So I won't bore you with going through that again. That's the sides of the spice caddy completed. So the next stage now is to use this piece to make the centre divider and handle. And I'm going to connect that to the sides with a couple of little mortise and tenons. So the next stage is to make the divider and handle for the spice caddy. And I'll hold this to the sides with some uh, mortise and tenons, which we'll do by hand because they're only going to be very small. Now in here, I can pull this apart because I'm going to need to anyway. There we go. 
You can see I've already cut a groove around the inside for our base, which I'll make out of plywood. Plywood because it's fairly stable and fairly strong for something very thin. I'm going to use hand tools for cutting the actual tenons. Uh, I'll use a combination of drill, electric drill, and uh, hand tools for the mortises. Because they're very small and in such weird spots, I don't want to do it with the Festool, Festool Domino machine. But also, I'm doing through tenons, and I want them to look part of the finished thing. We'll be seeing the edges of the box joints, so it'll be nice to see the ends of the tenons as well sticking through. I think it'll just give it a more old-fashioned kind of appeal, which I'm going for. Now, one of the tricks with things like this, you'll hear everybody say it, is to start away from your line and then sort of, you know, sneak up on it or pare away the excess until everything's a tight fit. And we're going to do exactly the same here. So you can see here is my line. This is my waste area I've coloured it in. And I'm going to come just inside. So uh, this isn't the area I'm cutting, but just in from the line. So you can see there, hopefully. Oh, that's a bit too much. There we go, we just want to leave a tiny bit. So I'm stopping just short of my scribe line there. And I will move on to this one. I'm going to put a piece of plywood underneath the timber I'm working on, just so as, as I chisel through it, I don't dig into the workbench. Now this is a real test of these little Narex chisels because <laughs> Jarrah is a very hard wood. Very hard and very silicious, which means it's high in silicon. There we go. Right, I'm impressed with this Narek chisel. All right, so you can see we've got our tenon there. That's still wider than the final dimensions. And the reason for that is after we've drilled, our, drilled and chiselled out our mortise, we're going to fine tune this for a tight fit. I've marked out the centre of our side piece, and these two lines represent the top and bottom of our mortise. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill a couple of holes here, and then we'll chisel out the difference. I'm going to use the drill press to make sure that the, the holes are nice and square. My wood is 10.3 millimetres thick for my handle. So I'm going to drill a 9.5 millimetre hole, or a couple of holes, and then, as always, sneak up on the difference. So now I'm just going to square off this hole here, <laughs> square off this mortise using paring cuts. As you can see, the tenons are cut to go into the side pieces. I've left scrap here, we're going to remove most of that. But before we do, to get a bit of a feel for how much we need to remove, we're going to cut out the holes for our fingers in the handle. And I'm just going to drill a series of holes here with a Forstner bit. And uh, yeah, then we'll just smooth it out with a rasp and a file and a bit of sandpaper. I've center punched my holes so I can make sure I align them as I drill. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to align that now with the point on my Forstner bit and then bring in my fence. And theoretically, then all of my holes should line up. Now I need to cut from where the top of the sides finish up to somewhere near the handle in an arc or some sort of decorative pattern to make it look neat. I'm going to use this French 
curve set here and we're going to see what fits and i'm going to mark some points on the actual french curve with the pica dry pencil so we can flip it and repeat it and get it pretty accurate on the opposite side we also want to make sure that it finishes before the edge here so we've got a little pencil mark there i'll just carry that on with the pica dry so you can see it here we go i think that's our curve so i'm going to take a line on the jarrer itself like that but i'm also going to mark on the template here on the french curve with the pica dry yeah there we go where they intersect here so when we flip it over we can easily line it up again and repeat the curve and we should end up with a bit of symmetry okay so that's going to be our center divider slash handle shape let's take that over to the bandsaw and cut off the excess okay so now we have all the components of our spice caddy we've got the inner handle and divider the two outer sides the two the front and the back and the base so now we're going to do a dry fit make sure it all fits together properly uh, and then pull it apart and glue it and we're done there all right that's our unit there so uh, now we're just going to glue it together Put it up on some pointy painter's pyramids and I'm going to give it a quick coat with a bit of water-based varnish. And so there we are, there's the finished unit. It holds 10 spices and has a handle so I can easily carry it out here to the kitchen from the cupboard and then back again when I'm finished. Okay, thanks once again for watching. I hope this video has been of some use. Have a great day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.